Mark Rogers TV, week eight of our college football predictions. And why am I so relaxed? Well, it's because my confidence picks have to come through this week. I am, I am just resting assured that they will come through this week. I've let you down at 10 and 9. Of course, that's 10 and 9 against the spread, our confidence picks. But we aim to go more like 65% for the confidence picks against the spread. Look at the track record. The track record is still right there at 65% at 85 and 49 against the spread confidence picks. But again, 10 and 9 this year. Michigan State let me down 20 and a half points against Purdue. Could only win by 14. Florida State 22 and a half against Syracuse. Gave up the late touchdown. Didn't pull through. But TCU did plus eight and a half against Baylor. All right. The Big 12 is loaded with three very pivotal matchups. We've got Baylor, West Virginia. Let's take West Virginia plus the eight and a half points at home. Like the Mountaineers in this one, Baylor coming off the emotional win, coming back from 21 down at TCU. So Baylor wins the game outright, but Mountaineers plus the 8.5 points. Let's stay in the Big 12 with a confidence pick. TCU coming off that emotional loss uh, at home against, uh, or that was on the road in Waco against Baylor. TCU will win against Oklahoma State. But I like the Cowboys. I think they were just sleepwalking against Kansas last week and winning by just a touchdown. The Cowboys get 10 points against TCU. So TCU pulls it out. It's a game at home. But I like Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy. Like what this football program is all about. 10 points with Oklahoma State against TCU. Let's stay in the Big 12 with another huge one, Oklahoma and Kansas State. So these three games are going to start to separate the men from the boys, and it's Oklahoma taking on Kansas State. Of course, the Sooners are a seven-point favorite, and I like the Sooners to cover the seven points. Not a confidence pick, but the Sooners cover the seven against a uh, typically game Wildcat bunch. All right, let's move it on to the SEC where we've got the third-ranked team in all of college football, Ole Miss taking on Tennessee. The Vols are a 16-and-a-half-point dog in this one. And they should be, because the Rebels have been that good against Texas A&M in the week before against Alabama. The Rebs will win comfortably 16 and a half too much, even against that defense. Vols put some points on the board. Uh, Ole Miss takes care of business at home, and they take care of business comfortably, but not that comfortably. Take Tennessee plus the 16 and a half. Ole Miss wins the football game. Alabama, Texas A&M. Check out our post with Ben George of Tide 99-1 breaking down Bama and Texas A&M. That Tide defense will be challenged by the four and five wide receiver sets and Kenny Hill. Uh, Texas A&M looking miserable against Ole Miss and Mississippi State the past two weeks. Take Bama's defense at home. They get the running game going. They push Texas A&M, push those Aggies all over the field. Bama minus 13 and a half over Texas A&M. Let's stay in the SEC. Do we have anything else out of the SEC? We do. We've got Georgia, Arkansas. The Hogs have played extremely well. This has to be the best team in the history of college football, riding a 15-game conference losing streak. They took A&M to the wire. They had a two-touchdown lead in the fourth quarter. They took Bama to the wire at home last week. Arkansas back at home. How do they respond from a very, very difficult loss? We believe that they'll respond well. Georgia wins a nail-biter, so the streak goes to 16. Arkansas is on the cusp of breaking that streak. They'll get it done here in the next few weeks, maybe against LSU. Georgia wins. Arkansas plus 3.5 in that one. All right, let's move it on to the Big Ten. We've got Ohio State taking on Rutgers. The Buckeyes look like a much different team than the one that lost in the shoe against Virginia Tech. Nonetheless, the Buckeyes taking on Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights get 21.5, and, and I believe that's just a shade too much. Buckeyes win comfortably, but Rutgers has played very well in losing just the one nail-biter to Penn State. So Rutgers, they could be undefeated right now, like a Kentucky. Uh, Would have been fun to see some teams like that undefeated through six games facing a major opponent. Uh, that said, Buckeyes in the shoe win it, but we like Rutgers. We think 21 and a half is just a bit too much. Michigan State, Indiana, the Sparty, uh, the Spartans, Sparty, however you want to go with that. 
uh, the Spartans have, um, man, they've, they've looked disappointing the last few weeks. This looks like the best team, or is considered the best team in the Big Ten, especially with Braxton Miller out of the mix for Ohio State. We will see uh, the first or second week of November against the Buckeyes. Michigan State barely got by Purdue, needed a pick six late to secure the win. Week before, collapsed late against Nebraska and held on for dear life. We like Michigan State to right the wrongs. Mark D'Antonio getting through to his team to finally complete the win. Michigan State on the road at IU covers the 15 and a half points. Finally in the Big Ten, we've got Nebraska Northwestern. The Wildcats have been a very solid football team since uh, some some um, not so impressive uh, outings non-conference. Um, but Cal's turned out to be a pretty good team, so that loss and not so bad. Northwestern winning uh, most notably against Penn State and Wisconsin. Then they could have won against Minnesota. They dropped some passes in the passing game the last couple drives of that game and lose by seven. Northwestern keeps it tight against the Huskers. Nebraska wins, take Northwestern plus the seven. Out to the Pac-12 for some pivotal games. Stanford, Arizona State. Take Arizona State plus the three and a half points with Taylor Kelly possibly getting back in the lineup. The Stanford defense is exceptional, one of the best in college football. They will hold this one tight, but they don't score enough to separate themselves in this game. Cardinal wins on the road. Arizona State covers three and a half points. I know that's slim, similar to the Georgia-Arkansas situation. Stanford wins, Arizona State plus three and a half. Oregon-Washington, Ducks roll after the Huskies looked impressive last week against Cal. Ducks at home coming off the big UCLA win. Get it done once again over Washington by 20 and a half plus. UCLA Cal, still trying to figure out this point spread. I know UCLA was was trounced by Oregon last week in losing, what, 42-18? But six and a half points. UCLA just a six and a half point favorite against a Cal team. That is much improved. They've won four games after going 1-11 last season. They took Arizona to the wire. They beat Washington State. I get it, but this is still UCLA. This is still one of the 15 best teams in the country. UCLA in a confidence pick. Cover 6.5 against Cal. Take it. Clemson, confidence pick. I know it's on the road in Boston College. Plays close to the best. They run the ball. They run the clock. They shorten the game. So this is tricky. Because Boston College has a history, i.e. USC, earlier this year of maybe not always winning and pulling off the upset, but using the running game and tough D, uh, keeping the football, grinding it out, and keeping it close. But this is Clemson with better athletes. They'll make some plays. I know Deshaun Watson's out of the game, Cole Stapp will make some plays in the passing game. So I like Clemson minus four and a half to cover against BC in a confidence pick. Then finally, I believe we've covered everything but the big game in Tallahassee with Notre Dame in town. The status of Jameis Winston at this point on a Thursday, late, 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 uh, looks to be that Jameis Winston will play against the Irish. Notre Dame an 11 and a half point favorite. Notre Dame has typically here in the last 15 years um, fielded good football teams, and then when the moment of truth comes against an elite team, they get smacked down. Notre Dame will keep this one close. I like what Everett Golson brings in the passing game and the running game. I believe Notre Dame is recruited under Brian Kelly, uh, much superior athletes than to what they had uh, late in Charlie Weiss's tenure. Florida State's a disturbed team a bit, not quite in sync. Uh, Florida State's got the superior talent across the board. They're at home. I like Florida State to win the game. Jameis Winston has yet to lose. He will lose a football game. Yes, he will lose a football game even if he goes to the NFL next year. He's got 19 straight under his belt. Everett Golson has never lost a regular season game. The BCS championship game, yes. Florida State wins. Take Notre Dame plus the 11 and a half. Those are our picks once again. The confidence picks, Oklahoma State plus 10 against TCU, Clemson minus 4.5 against BC, and UCLA minus 6.5 against Cal. Take those away. Let us uh, hear from you now. We'd love to get your picks on a week 8 of college football right here on Mark Rogers TV.